Assalamu alaikum, it's time for your weekly dose of Roundup. Well, I wonder what we've got lined up for today. We have a packed show today where we'll be visiting several countries, but for now, let's go to our headlines. Demonstrations continue in Khartoum, Sudan against the military rule. Huge crowds are regularly taken to the streets to demand a return to civilian rule since a coup on October 25th. Several protesters and police officers have been injured and lost their lives. The Omicron variant is still rampant globally, but many countries are starting to relax restrictions. Omicron has proven to be less severe across vaccine populations and countries. Countries like England have cut self-isolation days from 14 days down to 5. And elsewhere, travel rules are also easing. In the US, the Supreme Court has blocked President Joe Biden's rule requiring workers at large companies to be vaccinated or masked and tested weekly. Meanwhile, the British Prime Minister Boris Johnson is in more hot water as he admitted to attending a party in the garden of his home while the country was under strict lockdown back in May 2020. He offered an apology in the Houses of Parliament on Wednesday. Australia recorded its hottest day ever at 50.6 degrees Celsius or 123.26 degrees Fahrenheit. The temperature on Thursday in Onslow, Western Australia, matched the record set in 1962. The temperature isn't helping as large bushfires scorched thousands of hectares of land recently. Tunisian soccer fans voiced their anger towards the organisers of the Africa Cup of Nations in Cameroon after the referee prematurely stopped the match. The Tunisia versus Mali match was stopped when the official blew the final whistle at 85 minutes. The match was restarted and yet again stopped at 89 minutes and 40 seconds with Mali winning 1-0. 40 minutes later, after awarding the man of the match trophy and giving news conferences, the officials decided to add four more minutes, but Tunisia refused to play again. Jinnah, how important do you think it is to take care of your mental health? That's a good question, Jangi. I would say taking care of your mental health is as important as taking care of your physical health. However, sometimes it can be hard to find ways that can help. You know what, I completely agree with you and also think that this upcoming report might be of interest for you. Our reporter Samila brings us some great advice on the issue. Do you get days when you just feel sad for no reason? Or do you get anxious over things that just don't seem to bother your friends? Now more than ever, there's a lot of talk about the mental health of young people. But what exactly is mental health? I think we need to talk to an expert. Let's go find some answers. Why is mental health important? I mean, having good mental health um, for a young person means that they're able to grow, develop and do things generally that are expected for their age. And it's important because when we feel that our mental health is poor, we, you know, it becomes harder to do things and it starts to affect us in many different ways. Um, it might start to be harder to go to school, you know, you might find it a struggle to do things with your friends and families and just generally doing things that matter to you becomes harder when your mental health is poor. Why do you sometimes feel sad or anxious? Emotions uh, such as happiness, sadness, fear, anger, you know, all of the emotions that we feel are very normal and we shouldn't shy away from them or be ashamed of them. However, I would say that instead of pushing them away, it would be better if we can pay attention to the situations that lead us to feel this way. And this can teach us much more about ourselves and it can also teach us to be more resilient and, and how to cope with the emotions when they arise in the future. How do the things we eat affect our mental health? So the food that we eat produces hormones and chemicals that um, impact our mental health. So for example, eating a lot of processed and sugary foods can cause dysregulation in blood sugar. And this in turn can cause difficulties in sleeping. It can cause irritability. It can cause mood swings and anxiety. So having a balanced diet, eating regularly and staying active really supports a healthy brain development. And, and that increases the happy hormones um, and so leads to improved mental health. What tips do you have if you're feeling down? 
I would encourage you to take some moments to reflect on the emotions. Think about how you're feeling as well as what could be causing you to feel this way. Um, you know, sometimes mental health difficulties can run in families. So it's important to think about where your difficulties may be coming from and see if you can speak to your family about this and get support together. The main thing is important to remember that you're not alone and, you know, there are people who care about you. And so reaching out and sharing your difficulties can actually really help you because the emotion that you're feeling that you know they will become less heavy and it become less of a burden once you're able to share where can we find more information about mental health and who can we speak to speak to your parents of course your family it's you know that those are the people that you spend most of your time with so speak to them mostly um if you you know if you're not able to get through help through them then go speak to your teacher there's also a lot of information on the internet so um there are a number of websites so you can access those as well to get some extra support for your mental health Thank you, Dr. Dilly, for talking to us today. We've learned a great deal. Did you know that our beloved Hizura Arctis answered a question about mental health? It is because uh, we, have, we are involved too much in uh, materialistic things. The, the preference order of our desires and our wishes has changed. And instead of seeking Allah's love and Allah's closeness, we are running after worldly things. Hmm? This is the main cause of it. And uh, when your desires are not fulfilled, you cannot uh, get whatever you want, then you become frustrated. And then that frustration leads to anxiety. So this is what Allah Ta'ala has said in the Holy Quran, Allah bi zikrillah that remembrance of Allah is the best way for the satisfaction of your heart. So it seems like I can help my mental health by doing a number of things. Eating healthily, exercising regularly, talking to my family about my problems and most importantly remembering to pray regularly. Zakala Samila, we hope that you've all learned something new on how important it is to take care of our mental health. Despite everything going on in the world, we can always rely on the guidance from our beloved Hazur. May Allah be his helper. We now go to Nasser for the Friday sermon summary. Assalamu alaikum, my dear brothers and sisters. Last Friday, Hazur continued to speak about Hazrat Abu Bakr, radiallahu anhu, the first Khalifa of Islam. Did you know the migration from Mecca to Medina took place in the year 622 CE? From this day onwards, the Islamic Hijri calendar started, which we all know and follow. During this week's Friday sermon, Hazul mentioned one of the miraculous incidents which took place during the migration. Hazul said the Holy Prophet and Hazrat Abu Bakr anhu, passed by the tent of a woman named Umm Ma'bad and inquired whether she had any food, meat or dates which they could purchase from her. However, she did not have anything as her people were enduring times of hardship and famine. The Holy Prophet وسلم, saw a goat in the corner of the tent and asked about it. Umm Ma'bad said that this goat was extremely weak to the extent that it could not even produce milk. The Holy Prophet وسلم, asked if he could try milking it. Thus, the Holy Prophet وسلم, prayed and then milked the goat, so much so that the entire group of people could drink its milk. The Holy Prophet وسلم, gave Umm Ma'bad the milk and she drank it to her fill, after which the Holy Prophet وسلم, himself drank some. He then left a pail of milk with Umm Ma'bad, purchased the goat from her and continued on his journey. Beloved Hazul mentioned that after eight days of travelling, they reached Quba on a Monday, which is two to three miles from Medina. The people of Medina had heard about the Holy Prophet Wasallam's depart from Mecca and had been awaiting his arrival. One day, a Jewish man standing atop a hill spotted the Holy Prophet Wasallam and Hazrat Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu approaching and announced to the Muslims that their leader had arrived. The Muslims rushed out to meet them. As they approached, 
Hazrat Abu Bakr stood up while the Holy Prophet وسلم, was quietly sitting. Some of the people of Medina, who had not yet seen the Holy Prophet وسلم, first approached Hazrat Abu Bakr and began greeting him. At that time, Hazrat Abu Bakr took off his cloak and shaded the Holy Prophet وسلم, from the sun, upon which the people realized that this was the Holy Prophet Brothers and sisters, from this incident, we can understand the simplicity of the Holy Prophet وسلم, and it is also illustrated the love of Hazrat Abu Bakr anhu, had for the Holy Prophet Hadur ayyadullahu ta'ala bin Asil Aziz also mentioned that after the stay in Quba, the Holy Prophet وسلم, set out for Medina. While on the way, the Holy Prophet وسلم, was in the valley of Banu Salim bin Auf when it came time for the Friday prayer. The Holy Prophet وسلم, offered the Friday prayer in the mosque of the valley of Ranuna along with a hundred Muslims. This mosque became known as the Mosque of the Friday Prayer, as this was the first Friday prayer offered by the Holy Prophet ﷺ in Medina. Beloved Hazur, Ayyadullah Ta'ala, bin Asil Aziz clarified that this mosque would have been formally established later on. Dear brothers and sisters, this was just a very brief summary of last week's Friday sermon, which was filled with many interesting stories and incidents. We hope you are able to hear the full Friday sermon, which can be found on mta.tv. Until next time, Assalamu alaikum. Zakala Nasir. Remember to catch up on this week's Friday sermon if you haven't listened to it already. It's available on mta.tv. Jinnah, have you ever gone swimming in the ocean? I have, but it can be risky. Why? Where are we going next? Well, if you're in Australia, you'll be in good hands with the lifesavers. Let's go to the other side of the world to find out a bit more. Australia is well renowned across the world for its amazing beaches. But when swimming at the beach, there can be some risks involved. Today, we're at the Mooloolaba Surf Life Saving Club in Sunshine Coast to talk about some of the great work that they do here. Today I'm here with Shane, Sunshine Coast Life Saving Services Coordinator. Would you like to introduce yourself to our worldwide audience, please? Yeah, g'day, Corinne. G'day, crew. My name's Shane Urban. I'm a volunteer lifesaver here on the beautiful Sunshine Coast. I'm also very lucky to be a full-time employee of Surf Life Saving Queensland. Um, so, could you describe to us who are lifesavers? It's a good question. There are different types of lifesavers on our beach. We've got our full-time paid lifeguards. We also have a whole bunch of people who are volunteer lifesavers. They uh, range from ages from sort of uh, 13 years old, 15 years old, up to, well, we've got some people who are 90, 80, wow. 90 years old. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, and we've got big numbers of our volunteer lifesavers. They do work for uh, Monday to Friday, plumbers, lawyers, teachers, students, but they are uh, big numbers at our clubs, like here, beautiful Mooloolaba, yeah. uh, big numbers of active members, like maybe 10 to 20 people on patrols. Uh, so maybe two, 300 people are active lifesavers at some of our clubs. And um, how do you train to become a lifesaver? To become a lifesaver, a couple of pathways. Uh, as young folks, you can join a program called Nippers. And we take people from uh, sort of seven years old up to about 13, and uh, we show them how to uh, be surf safe, and yeah. how to become lifesavers. Now you don't need to be a nipper first. Uh, if you'd like to become a lifesaver at any age, over 15, uh, you just need to be able to swim 400 metres in a pool and under nine minutes in Karim, I reckon you're uh, up for that. Uh, no, uh, I think I'd struggle. <laughs> So Karim, you can see just up here is one of our big resources is Lifesaver 46. Wow, right, that's really cool. Lifesaver 46 looks after us here on the Sunshine Coast. Okay. And also we've got Lifesaver 45 down the Gold Coast. So an IRB is made up of uh, inflatable uh, pot, uh, sections on the pontoon and a hard floor. 25 horsepower motor just here with a four blade prop on the back and also a big prop guard to save it, uh, make it nice and safe. Over the other side you've got a tube rescue uh, tube so that the crew can jump out with the tube and go and rescue people maybe near the rocks in big chasms or whatever. Also a tow rope just in case we have some disabled uh, boats that need to be brought back in. Uh, there's a paddle 
So Karim, this is a SSV, a side-by-side -side vehicle. We use it to launch our IRBs or our jet skis, yeah. or in fact, a uh, rove up the beach. So we'll go to yeah, another yeah, remote yeah. part of the beach to see that uh, anyone's not in the water, make sure they're swimming between the flags, and we'll go up and check it out doing a roving, roving patrol. With 2,700 rescues, 717,000 preventative actions, and over 30,000 first aid treatments, the surf lifesavers here in Queensland truly are unsung heroes. Jazakallah Dal Karim. As you can see from this very program, we have studios all over the world that are making programs in different languages. You know, one of the most popular programs for our Bengali viewers is Shota Shondane. And you're in for a treat with a behind the scenes look at how this special live call-in program is made. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. This is Darut Tablik, the central mosque of Ahmadiyya Muslim Jamaat, Bangladesh. It is also the place where MTA Bangla studio is. And today, the most famous show for Bangla speaking viewers, Shote Shandhane, is being conducted live. Let's find out how do they make it. Starting countdown. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, and you're on. Usually, MT Bangla collaborates with MT International for this show, but fortunately, this time everything is being done here in Bangladesh. October, <laughs> Hazur Anwar Aidallah Taala Benasi Lazir Unumudun Kurme Amra Hazrat Masihe Maud Alaihi Salatu Baslamir Lekha Theke Nirbachi To Udhri Thi Shara Shori MTR Pordaay Amra Dekhai Amra O Ahmadi Der Proshne Uttur Diye Thaaki Ebang Amra Der Doshok Der Mudde Beshir Bhagi O Ahmadi Oti Thi Thaaken Tarar Shara Shori Phone Call Koren Ebang Tadir Proshne Amra Uttur Diye Thaaki Aarekti Boshish Chhodse Je Bangladesh Er Puttan To Anchole Raat Jege Manush Gobhir Agrohoni E Onushante Dekhen. For being live, it has its own hardship and problems. Many sectors are working simultaneously, which sometimes creates confusion. But by the grace of Allah, we pull through the hardships and keep merging forth. The process of conducting a live program is quite hard. We have to be ready for any possible complexity. Also, editors have to do a lot of hard work, often editing and also real-time mixing, for which they don't get much rest. Shoteshandhane gets translated into two different languages, Urdu and English. Translation is hard work, but the translators do that for two hours straight nonetheless. With those, a live program also needs graphical support, and the graphics team gives all their support for the show. Also, people working in the production team shows their determination. Ekhon kar juge media hotse onik boro ekta bepar. So, a media diye amra Muslimad al Islam ebang Islam er shottu bani pochar korte barte si. Ita yashole amader ekta exciting matter. Karon shottu shonda na amon ekta program jeta the shottu bani pochar kora hai. So, amra ekhane je kaj kora shujok pachi. Ita hotse ekta boro bepar amader jonno. Live program is a live way. We will edit the video. We will edit the video. We will edit the program. We will edit the video. We will edit the video. We will the PCR, camera, editing, caller, and phone. So, we will the sector. We will manage the to manage the the live program. A lot of unseen works are done here in MT for the shows that we love and watch. And people are working day and night for it. That's our cue. Until next time, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Every week, so many of you send in your views before our episode goes live. Let's look at some of them on this week's topics. This week's topic is very pertinent to the current situation of the world. I will share five tips for taking care of our mental health. Firstly, develop a relationship with Allah. As Allah has said in the Holy Quran, 
Indeed, it is in the remembrance of Allah that hearts find solace. Secondly, always have enough sleep. Eight to ten hours sleep is essential for the kids. The third point is, avoid junk and processed food and try to go organic. The fourth thing is, get out in the fresh air and do exercise regularly. Exercise releases happiness hormones. Last but not the least, if you ever feel that you are struggling, then always discuss it with your parents because they can help you fix it. Jazakallah. We all need to take time to slow down and relax. It is a big part of managing stress and enjoying our lives. Talking about your feelings can help you stay in good mental health and deal with times when you feel troubled. Our bodies and our minds are connected. When you take care of your body, you also take care of your mind. My way of improving my mental health is self-compassion. It is important to celebrate your achievements and instead of being sad about your mistakes, you should try to improve them in a positive way. Jazakallah. One way to improve mental health is to be in a balanced diet, to do regular exercise each and every day. Jazakallah. I have to do a laugh, play and smile. We've travelled all around the world, but we're still not done because now we're going to travel to the opposite side of the world, to the west coast of America, to find out more about one of its beautiful cities. Welcome to Portland in the great Pacific Northwest. Portland is well known for its natural and scenic beauty, which makes it a haven for outdoor enthusiasts. Portland, the largest city in Oregon, is well known as the end of the Oregon Trail a journey that settlers took from east to west more than 200 years ago. Today, the state has a population of 4.5 million people. Portland famously received its name after a coin flip between two settlers who couldn't decide between Boston or Portland. The City of Roses is famous for its unique brand of politics and lifestyle. Locals and visitors alike love the scenery, hiking, and all things outdoor, with the Rocky Mountains stretching down one side of the state and the Pacific Ocean on the other side. Portland is nestled in a valley. From beautiful waterfalls and trees reaching the sky, there is so much to see here. There's also rain. Lots of rain. The rain keeps the scenery lush and green. When you're aboard of the outdoors, you can move indoors to OMSI, the Oregon Museum of Science and Industry, or one of the largest bookstores in the country, Powell's Bookstore. All of this activity is sure to make you hungry. That's when a trip to the world-famous food carts is a must. Nestled in one of Portland's neighborhoods is our mosque, the Portland Rizwan Mosque, where prayers and events are held for the Jama'at and visitors. Inaugurated in 1987 by the fourth Khalifa, Hazrat Mirza Tahir Ahmed, may Allah be pleased with him, the mosque is a blessing for the Ahmadi Muslims living here. We hope you enjoyed a short look at our beautiful city. Until next time, Assalamu Alaikum. What a jam-packed episode, but unfortunately, that's all we've got time for today. Make sure to send us your views and send your around the worlds too. Email them to roundup at mta.tv and follow us on social media for lots of behind the scenes content. Until next time, Assalamu Alaikum.